What's going on? Lori Vallow. It can't be anything else. I would love to have this posture right now. He looks like a superhero. You did it. Just stay in there. And she said some crazy things, but it was clear she understood what was going on and that folks were dead. It's as good as it's gonna get. Turning now to Idaho, where cult mom Lori Vallow Daybell's attorneys have filed a motion to appeal. She was convicted of murder and conspiracy to commit murder back in May for the deaths uh -huh. of her two youngest children and her husband Chad's first wife. Well, now... Lori's appealing. Yeah, I mean, always, always, <laughs> always expect that people are going to appeal in court cases. Always. Just expect it. But why? I feel like this appeal is just gonna get thrown away so quickly. But I want to remind you guys, when cases like this go to trial, when, you know, we go through everything, we get the conviction, we're in the courtroom, and then finally, let's say we get the guilty verdict. Sometimes the victim's families, there's a, there's a little relief when we get the guilty verdict, right? And then the sentencing comes around. It's another wave of anxiety because it's like, are they gonna get off easy? Are they gonna like actually get a strong sentence, you know? There's that wave. And then victims, families, and people involved, they usually get the sentence and let's say they're happy with it. And then this happens and these people appeal and it just drags the whole process out even longer. It's it's very stressful for all involved. Now, even the Lori Vallow's case involves a lot of her family. Uh, who knows if they even consider her family anymore. I don't know. I wouldn't. Goodbye, Lori. We've had enough. But it's just the appeals, it makes it into a much longer process and it's so stressful her attorneys are appealing those convictions citing numerous issues such as did the court err in its order dated april, april 11 2022 wherein the court found the defendant after spending 10 months in a mental hospital was competent to stand trial wait did the court err okay was the court incorrect in its order dated april 11 2022 wherein the court found that the defendant, after spending 10 months in a mental hospital, was competent to stand trial. Lori was probably in a mental institution because one, her whole family has gone missing, essentially, and she's acting like she doesn't know what happened after she goes on a Hawaiian vacation. And two, she's like clearly in a state of, actually, you know what? Would you call Lori's state a state of religious delusion? I feel like it's so different than you remember I've talked about the South Texas murders with uh like Andrea Yates with like Deanna like these people they had severe religious delusions severe religious delusion there's something about Lori's where to me it feels like she's more deluded by chat like Chad Daybell could have said that aliens are God and they walk the planet amongst us and everyone's skin walks, which I, I'm yeah. sure he was like saying that too as well. But I mean, I think she was more obsessed with Chad and was down to do whatever he said. And it's less about the just pure state of religious delusion. This just, it feels different than me. Sending the case back to the grand jury. And did the court err in allowing the jury to hear statements of co-conspirators but then rule in jury instructions that the government need not prove those persons were part of the conspiracy. They've also requested that a state public defender be assigned mm -hmm. to this appeal. Still with us, attorneys Jack Rice, Josh Schiffer. All right, gentlemen, uh, here's the thing that stood out to me. I printed it out. <laughs> we want to appeal for the crime that Lori was found guilty of, and um, we want the state to pay for it. Thank you. Out, and I was all excited to see what the specific grounds were, and it's about three pages, mm -hmm. and they are very typical grounds in terms of what one might expect an appeal to be about, and it really had everything in the kitchen sink. I think it laid everything out. To your point, competency was decided during a hearing, but they are raising that issue. Mm -hmm. Do you think that one of those stands out as one that you think, oh my gosh, this Court of Appeals is definitely going to look at this one, Jack? You know, when I look at appeals, especially with cases like- Guys, do you guys see this, this man? He's the most confident dude I have ever seen. I would love to have this posture right now. He looks like a superhero. I'm about to start taking shoulder pads and putting them in all of my t-shirts. What, how do I do that? I'm... Oh, this dude. I just want that. I want that. You know, when I look at appeals, especially with cases like these, Your Honor, what come to mind always is, did you see anything that was such a disaster that the jury couldn't have concluded some other way? 
And, and the standard is generally, at least That's based upon question. what I've been dealing with, certainly at the district court level when I'm trying cases, is basically that the Court of Appeals, the Supremes, generally, they never, ever want to overturn a case that a jury has concluded upon uh -huh. unless they have, unless they're backed into a corner. And I mean, that's what it feels like from my perspective. So my guess at this point Dude, they is really that... picked every shot where Lori was smiling, as they should, because that's, that's exactly how she acted through the trial. Everything that I saw, I still <gasps> think there shot, was sufficient dude, grounds to make the argument that she gets a new trial. This doesn't rise to that level because the standard is extraordinarily high, especially with cases like these where they don't want to have to do it again. And competency to me is is just a throw in. I think she, if there were any issues with her being able to help in her defense, mm -hmm. which we know is an issue for competency, I'm sure her attorneys would have raised that issue. She spoke at the end of the trial yep. and she said some crazy things, but time. it was clear she understood what was going on and that folks were dead, mm -hmm. even though they were speaking to her from the afterlife. Oh my God, wait a minute. Did he just roast her that hard? Wait, did he say that she said crazy stuff? I'm sure her attorneys would have raised that issue. She spoke at the end of the trial and she said some crazy things, but it was clear she understood what was going on and that folks were dead, mm -hmm. even though they were speaking to her from the afterlife. But here's the one, Josh. Like, it's so weird. Her delusions sound like a choice that she doesn't want to be talked out of. She just firmly believes this. Like there's the refusal to listen to people and then there's the inability to listen to people due to your religious like delusions where you really think all of this stuff is happening. That I have an issue with that I think maybe is the strongest one to your question. Um, and that's the one about allowing evidence in regarding the death of Charles Vallow. Right? She's going, she's going to be extradited to face those charges. She had not been convicted of it, but evidence of that was allowed into this trial. At the time of the trial, I thought that was a problem. And that's something that conceivably, one could argue, could certainly have affected the outcome of the trial. And look at how that prior bad act is. Wait, I thought he had a little ear. I thought he had a cute little ear. And then there's like animal painting in the background was like aiding to it a little bit. I didn't, what is that? I need to know what that is. I cannot unsee the little, the little bunny ear and the headphone right here. I need him to just move a little bit at some point. And, and look at how that prior <laughs> bad act issue has brought back cases that were decided previously. We just had a widow and murder trial where that prior bad act testimony was central to the appeal that removed him from his original sentence and caused him to be retried. That, I agree with you, is the most substantive of the appeals uh, uh, arguments that I've seen so far. But I also need to caution everybody, death penalty cases are appeals after appeals after appeals. It's a long arc game, and sometimes it just takes a little bit to gather steam. The, the easy parts of criminal- they really thought they were like a power couple. They really thought they were getting into heaven and they thought they were cool. Look at these two. I, I can't. Appeals remain easy for every court and every litigant because every single trial, you're going to see an appeal that generally Please relates move. to a few specific issues. That means that there's an opinion from the Court of Appeals Supreme Court on thousands of these cases that very often are making similar arguments that we kind of expect about sufficiency of evidence, uh, insufficient counsel. You know, you didn't call this witness, you should have called this. And a court has really good direction on that. But the prior bad acts, that's a decision by the court that dramatically affects the fairness ratio. The f so I, what the, we're kind of talking about in this video a little bit is that, okay, when filing an appeal, they basically have to say like, hey, was there a piece of information or a witness or something that was, went categorically wrong? And if this one thing was a little bit different, could this have changed the jury's entire vote? A, a lot of times, especially like with a full jury like this, when a trial takes this long and it has this much information, the answer is kind of no. So what their team is going to do is put together a list of like 10 really, really small things. And they're going to be like, look, we we have to appeal. We have to file this. And so he's just explaining into more detail, like why or why not? This may not be a thing. Fairness question. With his little As ear. to how a trial takes place. That's where they've got their best arguments. 
Yeah, and, and one could argue, oftentimes, as it, to Jack's point earlier, that even regardless of that, there was plenty of, of evidence to convict her. But again, this particular type of evidence, the, way, the reason why I think it's where sort of their most power lies, mm -hmm. is that that forces you to look at the other evidence differently. Mm -hmm. So even if there's a lot of other evidence, you could still argue this evidence taints the way a jury would look at that evidence. There was and not so that may be a strong argument. I just have to ask you, Jack, about a couple arguments that... Do you guys really think that they have any grounds for an appeal? In this whole video, five minutes in, they haven't named a single thing was like that huge moment that big witness, that big blunder. So they're just naming a bunch of little things here and there and like, oh, this could be it, this could be it. Maybe this, maybe this, this, this. That I think are so weak, I'm a little surprised they even put them in here. Ooh, did the government girl. commit fundamental reversible yeah, yeah. error in its opening statement? And did the government commit fundamental reversible error in its closing statement? Those two things, first of all, if you violate a rule and you bring in something that wasn't a part of the evidence, then you object at the time and the court can always declare a mistrial if it's so egregious. That's I just it, don't girl. think this has any weight at all in an appeal. That's right. Jack. I told you guys what they're going to do if there's not a big moment. They're going to make a long list of, quite frankly, a bunch of bullshit and try to say this wasn't a fair trial. So, you know, if you guys are interested in true crime and court cases and all of that, what I recommend you also look into is after the trial is done, we have the guilty verdict, we have the sentencing, Go look at the appeals. Look at what they try to appeal for. It will tell you every single last final sticking point that they think they have. And honestly, the appeals list sometimes, it's laughable. Kitchen sink. This is kitchen <laughs> sink. What you're going to do is you throw everything, everything that in you the have kitchen sink. because you want to be able to make sure that if for some reason something pops up later, you can make the argument and say, I, 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 that's in the list. It's on the list, so you will just start tossing everything out there, knowing full well that of the 18 different arguments you're making, you might have one, the 404B stuff. Yeah. That's going to be the decent argument, and may that, maybe that one's not even enough. But the other 17, you kind of sort of hold your nose and you go, okay, let's file this one, everybody. Woo! Yeah, I mean, and Josh, is there any argument to be made about the yeah, cumulative effect? Put, so part of the reason I believe you throw all of these out there is if maybe two, three, or four have some merit to them, is that a possible... Uh, what does he mean by kitchen sink? You're going to put everything in the kitchen into it, every single ingredient, including the kitchen sink. It's just like an idiom. I think there's a power in the cumulative effect, but think again, who's the audience actually that these documents are written for? They are written for appellate judges. Appellate judges have huge power, but a really narrow mandate. Huh. They're supposed to go review whatever problems people are complaining oh, about from lower courts. Wow. They're not allowed to go relitigate the case. They're not allowed to insert stuff. No, they really are restricted into the way wow. that they... Wow, that's fascinating. I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? So when it goes to this specific type of judge, they're really just looking at the complaints. They're not looking at the whole case. Like, sure, they have access to some of these files. They have access to some of these things. But they, they're not really supposed to bring it all in. They're supposed to just look at the problems that were filed and decide, is this big enough of a problem? I actually didn't even realize that. So that's how some of these appeals pass because they just kind of have to argue for it. Uh, being an attorney is just arguing. It's just, it's just making a bunch of sh up and then seeing if you can twist it to work in your favor a lot of times. That, if your client is guilty, that's what you're doing. Let's just be real, dude. Review the decisions made by lower courts and the litigants in an effort to then either fix or reject. And most of the time, if there's a problem, send the case back down to that court in order for them to fix the issue. Here, we've got problems with the overwhelming facts and evidence that were involved. It's not like the defense fit into, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, they needed kill. No, that, that wasn't there. The defense is, it remains the mental health issue, but the physical evidence, the physical trial of the case, I don't think there's that much to review. And courts of appeal are really good at consolidating appeals, making them very smooth, short, and efficient. I expect that here. And you know, let's not forget, let's I not- just, I want him to move so bad, but I know, I know guys, 
There's a cat statue behind him. It can't be anything else. Overlooked the fact that Laura's now broke. Yeah. And they're looking for public defenders uh -huh. to take over uh, this yeah, case. Yeah. And I can say this, in my experience, um, public defenders who do appeals are some of the best attorneys. Oh, gosh, there's yeah. No, I don't think there's any issue there. Oh, they yeah. do a fantastic Brilliant. job. Brilliant. Brilliant people. Yeah. It's what they do. Yeah, Remember, yeah, I mean, that's the truth. Great. Yeah, it's yeah. the truth. When you realize court of appeals cases, the number of cases that are done by nice public defenders and public defenders' offices, usually the way it works around the country is you'll have the district court level, that, that trial court level, and you'll have actually appellate court public defenders. This is all they do, and they work on these kinds of cases, and they do large numbers of them. They have incredible expertise, Woo! and they're extremely good writers. And so that's critically Yeah, and they're also, it's like getting a third set of eyes. They're not like jaded from the whole case. It's not using the same public defender that she had before. This is the last person that is just gonna, you know, search through every nook and try to throw everything out here. And this is like also how you know, if someone, you know, is found guilty through the whole trial, they get a gnarly sentence, they appeal, and their appeal doesn't pass, then their next appeal doesn't pass. You, you did it. Just stay in there.